Hi. Okay, so I got this uh, light, LED flashlight from eBay. Was sold uh, as a 20 watt uh, LED light. As you can see, it is not working very well. The switch has a, have a, has a problem. Never mind about the switch. But you have here two switches, one on off and the other is uh, the uh, light high or low. So actually it was sold as 20 watts. 20 watts? I'm pretty sure this is not a 20 watts. It looks to me like uh, more than a 3 watts. But this is a uh, Chinese, so I will now disassemble it and see how they do in the control uh, of the LEDs. Now a little about uh, lighting a LED. In order to be uh, in a good power consumption, meaning you want to let the LED light to, to light as long as you can, you need to build a, a circuit with DC to DC converter and with a current limit that will limit uh, it will limit the current flow and you want to make sure that uh, your circuit is okay I am pretty sure that there is no such a thing in this uh, in this light, why I'm saying it? Because th this is a Chinese. It was sold. Uh, it was cheap. Now I see that the charging port is already broken. And also, this is a lithium ion. So if it is a lithium ion, you have three ways uh, to protect your cells. One is, of course, to put a protection circuit inside the lamp. The second is to put a control protection in your power supply and the third is to put a, a, a control on each battery in internal circuit in the battery that uh, is already done by many manufacturers and uh, this is called a protection circuit so if you buy a cell and you see a metal that is coming from up to down and it is a protected cell so probably you have this circuit so you have three ways now this is I'm not let's see <laughs> maybe I will be surprised <coughs> when opening this is the first time I'm opening this one so let's see if I will be surprised in the circuit also this uh, this is protected against uh, rain and humidity and it is for outdoor use so let's see how they done it <coughs> first time I'm opening, I want to do it a long time ago but of course till you find the time to do such electronic things here it's take time to find the time. <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. Holy shit. <sighs> I'm not very surprised, <laughs> let's say. Okay, I see the batteries, the lithium are inside. I don't see any protection circuit, but maybe there is because it's covered with kind of blue but I am a, a little amazed how they done the high and the low LED light I wasn't expecting such a thing because what they done is actually I'm trying to understand what they done 
what they done and I see now what they done and I don't understand how they are doing such a bullshit and I will explain what I am seeing here okay so actually what they did is <laughs> this is funny okay this is funny way to do it what they did they connected in Syria's a resistor that will be they, they are controlling let's say the lead not by controlling the current flow but controlling the voltage <laughs> the voltage to the lamp and let's see that I'm right okay so it is a little difficult to see because I see that they are shorting this resistor and this is always here so what they are doing they are shorting the 12 ohm resistors uh, in order to uh, light the LED at uh, low light let's see if I'm right so if I will look as you can see this is 12 ohm and now if I will which switch this one so now it will be 0 ohm no it is not how come again maybe I didn't press the switch no I'm pressing it how come how come no this is the switch ah, okay 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 they are doing it from here to here okay again so I have have 12 ohm and now I will press the switch and I will have a zero ohm no so this switch is not working <laughs> okay okay it is working partitionally let's try again okay <laughs> as i said okay this is my writing problem if you see when i press the switch hard it is zero ohm and when i leave it it's not so meaning the contacts on the switch as you can see it is 2 ohm this is not okay it should be 0 12 or 11 when I press it hard so it is close to 0 okay so this switch <laughs> chain is it is also broken so this is now I understand why I have all the flickering because the resistor is changing its resistance let's take it out to make sure that I'm right but I'm sure that I'm right that the switch is not doing its, its, its job maybe but oh, ah, just a second maybe it is I see the solder on the wire is not let's say very good so maybe it is a soldering problem and the switch is okay uh, this is more reasonable to me let's go and resolder the switch in order to, to check what I see here so I'm resoldering the wire it doesn't look very good to me this is one side of the wire Let's do it also to the other side. The other side looks okay. And I'm almost sure that my problem is fixed. Let's recheck. Okay, so I have a zero. And when 
I press the switch I have to alphone. Okay, so as I thought it was just a soldering problem of the switch. Okay, I am pretty curious to know if the battery has any protection circuit, but when I'm touching it I don't feel any PCB inside the plastic so I bet I don't have any protection and I bet that the protection is on the power supply itself so the power supply is limiting uh, the voltage and also another thing that I see it's have only two wires input and if I have 7.2 volts so I should have at least three wires if the circuit was outside never mind so now let's go about the power of the LED so how can I know the power of the LED how can I know the power of the LED okay this will be uh, this will be simple yes this will be quite simple thing to do what I will do I have these two wires that are going to the LED so I will measure the current flow and the voltage while turning it on high power and it was said that it is 20 watts and if it is not I'm going to replace later the LED to a 20 watts LED and I will change the circuit and do a better way just a second just a second searching for my current meter soon I will find it just a second okay so I found my current meter Hall effect current meter very good unity brand can measure a DC flow and this is a very good tool recommended if you are using and uh, doing such electronic things at home so let's do a calibration now it is calibrated to zero amps because you have uh, of course magnetic fields that affect the reading so now we will measure the power of this LED so eventually what I need to do is I need to power it up let's say that it is on high this is the high current or high power what I will do I will measure uh, the LED voltage which is let's say 5.2 volts 5.2 volts and what about the current ha the current the current looks yes the LED is on but I again see some I see some contacts problem on this LED I the Chinese okay I will try to find the maximum current so as you can see I try it is all such a, let's say not a, not a good quality LED okay I get reading 0 0.08 maximum 0 0.08 let's say it is 0 0.1 amp <laughs> I don't believe this is only half watts half watt of light they sold it as 20 watts of light I'm amazed every day I'm amazed again by the Chinese okay so as you can see this is a bullshit light not doing a job uh, very low very low power of course I can't li live with it so I will continue to tear it down so let's do a full tear down because it is a bullshit can't use it this way so I will disconnect uh, all 
this amazing electronics. Amazing electronics, I'm impressed by the amazing electronics. And we will look now at the Cobb LED. Maybe I will try to disassemble it from this side. And of course I will buy a better lead and put it instead of this lead. And when I'm doing it, I will also change the power control and the power current control. And maybe I will do a current adjust circuit. By the way, the metal is okay. I mean the cover quality and and the water protection. Let's say it is. It looks reasonable to me. So let's take it out. The cobbler should be cooled by uh, connecting to a heat spreader. I don't believe it. Pfft, Chinese. If you will look uh, also at the glass, it is even not broken in a good way. The light took a hammer <laughs> to break it or something. Never mind. Everything is here. I'm impressed for the now the bad work, not the good work. Let's disassemble the reflector, light reflector. So the good quality was outside. As I open it up, I see it's bad quality and not a good quality. Okay. Okay, the cool look to me okay because it is connected with screws to the metal, which is okay. It's a heat spreader, by the way. You can see that uh, the heating uh, heating paste is okay, and it is fully uh, connecting the LED. Okay, so I will take, by the way, this lead off and I will try to measure in a direct power supply uh, the power that it can obtain. By the way, this is a quite interesting way to do it. What you need to do in order, if you have a lead and you don't know what is the voltage of the lead, because it can be 12 volt or 3 volt or 30 volt and you want to make sure that you get the highest performance from the LED what you need to do is to up your voltage and limit the current to a very low current for example 10 milliamps till you start to see the LED lighting when you start to see it lighting you leave your voltage fixed and you up the current you up the current till you see the LED is emitting more light when you see that the emitting light is steady, meaning you give more power, but the LED is emitting the same lights as it was before, so you can know that you are on the correct current and voltage to the LED, even so you can estimate the voltage and the current without having the data sheet. This is a good thing to remember. Maybe I will do a video about it. So thank you for now and bye bye.